Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Def Repair video. In today's episode, we're going to be showing you how to replace the uh, LCD display assembly on a 14 inch MacBook Pro M1. Uh, this is going to be model A2442. Uh, the issue with these displays are they are extremely thin and fragile. And in this case, uh, the display itself actually wasn't cracked on the outside. Uh, but there is some case damage as you can see here with this panel gap and this little bend in here was enough to make not only the inner display no longer work uh, but the backlighting no longer work as well uh, because when we open the unit up you can actually tell uh, it's on but there is no display at all uh, so again in today's video we're going to be showing you how to replace the entire display assembly if you guys are interested in any of the parts or tools you see today, we will have them linked in the description below, but let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so we're gonna start by flipping the unit over and removing uh, the eight, four at the top and four at the bottom, pentalub screws that hold the bottom case on. Now I'm gonna use a suction cup to peel off the bottom case. And now we're inside the unit. So as with any MacBook repair, the very first thing we're gonna do is unplug the battery. Uh, the battery daughter board cable, the flex cable, comes out right here on the left of the trackpad. And we have to remove the trackpad flex and peel it back to unplug this cable as well as undo the actual battery connection. We're going to start with the T3 screwdriver for these first two screws. Then we're going to take a plastic spudger and unplug the trackpad flex cable. And then the battery management unit flex cable or daughter board cable. And now we're going to switch to a T5 to undo the pancake screw that connects the battery. Uh, to the battery daughter board. We're gonna use a plastic spudger to bend it away. And now our unit's safe to work on. The logic board is no longer connected to our battery. All right, so the next step here, uh, since we're gonna be replacing the LCD, we're only gonna be working on the top side here. So the next step is gonna be using that T5 screwdriver to remove the two or four in total. I'd put two at each side, uh, T5 screws that hold the LCD hinge covers on. We're gonna work our way uh, inside. So right next to those hinge covers are gonna be one on either side, two in total, a uh, very long T5s that are gonna hold the Wi-Fi vent module in place. And continuing inward, there's gonna be two at each location or four in total, T5s that hold the LCD uh, display connectors as well as the Wi-Fi vent module uh, to the top case. And that's gonna be it for the T5 screwdriver for now. We're gonna go ahead and switch to a T3. And we're gonna remove first the two on the right here. And this is gonna be uh, the little retention bracket for the LCD proximity sensor. We're gonna go inward again to the uh, LCD display connector connection points where they plug into the logic board and remove at the retention bars, so it's going to be four T3s. It looks like one of these was unplugged, so that could be why our display was no longer uh, working. We'll look into that. And then we're going to come down to the Wi-Fi antenna module below here and go ahead and undo the retention bar and then the T3 holding the cables in place. And now we're gonna to switch to a PL1 in order to get the nine, three at each location, screws that hold the Wi-Fi event module to the top case. So now we're gonna take our plastic spudger and unplug the Wi-Fi antenna cables and pull up on the Wi-Fi event module. 
We're going to fish out the LCD hinge covers. Unplug uh, the LCD proximity sensor as well as the LCD cables. And now we're ready to grab a T8 and unscrew the six, so three at either location, uh, LCD hinge screws. And again, if you guys are looking for any parts or tools you see in today's video, uh, they're not only available at our website, techdep.com, we'll also have them linked in the description below. Uh, if you guys are interested in a mail-in repair, similar to the one you see today, we will also have that linked in the description below. And if you're interested in a data recovery or a similar type of data work, uh, we will also have that linked below. Or you can check it out at techdep.com. Uh, we do it all every day. So with those T8s removed, we're now just gonna go ahead and make sure we unclip our LCD display connectors and take these little black covers out. And now we're gonna go ahead and open the unit in order to disconnect the LCD and the top case. And once we have it open, all we're gonna do here is pull directly flat this way and it'll separate our top case assembly from our LCD. So we're gonna take our brand new part here. Again, these are available at techdep.com or in the links in the description below. We're gonna unbox it and prepare it for installation. And what I like to do while this uh, cardboard cutout is on is just take my Pentalub screwdriver and open up the LCD hinges. That way I don't risk damaging the LCD. All right, so we're gonna open up the hinges all the way, flip it around. And now we're gonna take our top case assembly, make sure our display cables do not get pinched below it. And we're gonna act like we're opening the unit, tell the hinges go ahead and pop in. There's both sides. Now we're just gonna hold them as we close it and push them all the way down. All right, so now we just have to reinstall all of the parts we took out. Uh, the very first thing I like to start with are these little uh, covers, these little cushion covers at the bottom here, just to make sure I don't forget them. And then I'm gonna move on to the T8 screws, this three on either side, six in total. And when you're reinstalling these, you wanna make sure they are tight, but not too tight. Uh, if your LCD is closing on its own, uh, not staying open, if it is super floppy, uh, these screws are not tight enough. All right, the next step's just gonna be plugging in our connections. So we're gonna plug in our LCD proximity sensor. Uh, if the screen is not turning on when you open the unit, if it's just turning on and off flickering, uh, check this connection, make sure you plugged it in and it's plugged in all the way. Uh, this is what tells the computer when to turn on the display, when to turn it off and things like that. All right, so we're gonna plug in our backlight and webcam cables first on the right hand side followed by our LCD cable. And we're gonna lay our hinge covers back into place before we put the Wi-Fi vent module back in. And now we can place the Wi-Fi vent module back into place and connect our Wi-Fi antennas. I like to use the help of a plastic spudger And we're gonna start outside in. So again, we're gonna start with the four uh, black T5s, the ones that hold our LCD hinge covers down. 
And then we're going to move on to the long silver T5s that hold the Wi-Fi vent module down. Followed by the four T5s that hold the LCD display connectors as well as the Wi-Fi vent module into place. And now we're going to switch to a T3 screwdriver. And I'm going to start with the LCD proximity sensor on the right hand side. And I'm going to move on to the LCD display connections. And the Wi-Fi retention bracket for the Wi-Fi antenna cables. And the final T3 is going to be the T3 that holds uh, the antenna cables in place on the silver bracket in the center. Now we're going to go back to our PL1 and place the nine screws at the three locations. And now we're going to go back to a T5 to connect the battery connection screw. And we're going to plug in our battery management unit flex cable. Plug in our trackpad. And switching back to a T3 for the last time. Place the tension bar over the trackpad flex cable. And before we put the bottom case on, we're going to go ahead and plug in the unit and make sure everything's functional. So we're going to grab our charger, plug it in. Open up the unit and turn it on. There it is, as you can see, no flickering, no artifacting, and most importantly, our display is actually functioning. So now we'll go ahead and close it, unplug it, and put the bottom case on. So to do the bottom case, we're gonna first line it up and push down and forward. I like to do one side at a time or else you'll kind of fight them shimmying back and forth, one popping on, one popping off. So now I'm gonna put one screw in the right-hand side here, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect the left-hand side, and then put the rest of these screws in at the top side. Now you will notice that the four at the top are longer than the four at the bottom. All right, and that's gonna wrap up today's repair. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And with the help of the community, we'll be sure to assist you. If you saw any parts or tools how you need in today's video, check out the links below or check us out at techdep.com. And again, if you're interested in a mail-in repair or a similar repair, how we offer those, check us out at techdep.com or the links below. Thank you. We'll see you guys in the next episode.